Okay, here's the thing. If I come across in the next few minutes in any way sanctimonious or preachy or self-righteous, I'm going to give myself a slap in the face because I've made a big life choice. And like most people who make big life choices, you can get a bit preachy about it. You know, we've all met vegans. Uh, so I'm going to talk about this big life choice I made, why I made it, uh, why I feel like for, for Hannah and I, it was a great decision to make and how we did it because it was it took two years. It took two years of training to get to the point where we could make this life choice. And that is, I know a lot of you are going to groan now, and that is quitting booze. A life of sobriety. Well, not sobriety. I still do other stuff. I mean, not, not you know, not crack or cocaine, but, you know, the odd, you know what I mean, a bit of Mary Jane. That's fine. But, yeah, quit booze. That's it. We're off. We're, well, we're on the bandwagon. And we're staying there. Two years of one month off, one month on drinking we did. And on the months that we weren't drinking, we had a, we had a get out of jail free card, like a golden ticket, we called it, where we could drink. And the whole month that we weren't drinking was all about that golden ticket. We just couldn't wait to get to the point where we could use that golden ticket. <laughs> and that really made us realise that, okay, I think we got a bit of a problem. I started drinking when I was in my teenage, teenage years, like literally a lifetime ago. Uh, and I'd start off on the old hooch. I don't know if you fellow boomers out there remember hooch. It was this like Alcopop stuff. It tasted like fucking, it tasted like rainbows. Uh, just just sugar, basically, and alcohol in it. And I remember drinking it thinking, oh my God, I can't believe this stuff actually tastes delicious. And it's alcoholic. I get pissed and it tastes delicious. Not like, this, you know, because you try alcohol when you're a kid and your mum and dad would give you a sip. You'd be like, oh, what the fuck is this stuff? Uh, and then I got weaned onto it through Alcopops. Um, and so, yeah, I was drinking the old hooch. You got the old WKD, all that kind of crap, all that sugary stuff. And then uh, that was it, set me off. I then later on in life got into my vodka, being a bit Polish. I, I'm big into vodka. I like potato based spirits. Into my whiskies. Love, love my whiskies. I mean, if I think back about like my life of drinking, I'm not going to pretend it wasn't amazing. I, I had some amazing times. I mean, yeah, of course, I made some dubious decisions on, while under the influence, like we all did. But I had some fucking amazing times. You know, some great times. I mean, a, a single malt whiskey on a, on, a, on a cold winter's day by a fire with a friend talking about something interesting. Ah, oh. oh, what about a, a hot summer's day, a blistering hot summer's day in a, a, a nice cold crisp cider in a pub garden somewhere? <sighs> a beer, just, just a beer out of the fridge. Yeah, man, I mean, I just love it. I just adore alcohol. I adore, okay, one more. What about a big glass like a goblet glass, a really clean, thin glass of, 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 of like a, a Chardonnay. Or, 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 yeah, in a restaurant with some nice food. I mean, there's just so many situations. There's so, I, I love it so much that I had to quit it. You know, it became such a habitual thing for us to do, to build our lives around when we can next have a drink and when we can go out drinking. I, I couldn't imagine going to a social event and not drinking to take the edge off the, or the social, or to get rid of the social anxiety or to, to help with that. Like I couldn't, uh, going out, just why would you go out and not, and just be sober? I, I couldn't think of anything worse. I'd be, I'd be boring. I'm just some rigid old 40 year old who doesn't drink with no chat because he's not loosened up. I didn't, what quitting alcohol has taught me to do is a, be able to deal with social situations without having to drink through them. And B, try and be interesting enough to friends and family without having to drink, <laughs> without needing alcohol to do it. Um, and the reason, the, but the main reason why I personally needed to quit is because of one very important thing. 4 a.m., debilitating and crippling anxiety. See, this is the thing, right? When you start drinking, when you're in your teenage years, you wake up, you're a little bit of a sore head, you laugh it off. Oh, that's funny, I'm a bit hungover. You get to your 20s, maybe you're like a, the next day you feel a little bit ropey. You're like, oh God, never again. 30s, you're looking at like, you know, a couple of days of feeling like you want to just curl up into a ball and die. Uh, 40s, you got like a, the best part of a week to get over a boozy session, a best part of a week. And then you've got like the, the following week to have depression and anxiety. And then you've got the 4 a.m. crippling anxiety as well that wakes you up at 4 a.m. where you're so anxious you need to go downstairs and watch World War II documentaries on Netflix. That's how bad it, bad it gets. So it comes a point in your life where you've got to be like, okay, I'm done here. I'm done. This is not serving me. This is not, this is not enhancing my life. Yes, I'm having some nice times on it. And yes, it tastes absolutely delicious, but it's fucking me up. So quitting just is it basically for somebody like us was just impossible. You can just stop. 
we had to basically do one month on, one month off. And on a month off, we really then, it highlighted how much we had a problem with drinking and how much we were socially addicted to it. Uh, and then after a couple of years, we were like, okay, now let's just, okay, we've done enough training, let's do it now, let's stop. So now, bang, I'm about five weeks in, I haven't touched this, I'm not doing any golden tickets, I'm just going fat line, I'm making this video, and putting it out just so I, I can't, it almost like helps with the temptation because now I've made a video and I've publicly said, oh, I'm not drinking anymore. If I do, then I've, yeah, I'm gonna try and get a year. That's my mission. I'm gonna try and do a year of no booze. And then if I could do a year, maybe I'll push for two years. I wanna to get to a thousand days. Uh, ideally, I wanna to get to a thousand days of no drinking. So this is me committing to it. Uh, and I will say, I do genuinely, on the months off drinking, what I have found in the months off drinking, I just feel better. I just feel physically better. I have more energy. I don't feel as depressed. I'm more uh, focused in terms of work, so I'm more productive. Um, I, my, I don't have my, as much anxiety. I just feel better. And also, another thing that's really helped me through it is non-alcoholic beer. I don't know where I'd be without non-alcoholic beer. It tricks my brain into thinking, ah, oh, I'm having a beer, because it's thick. It doesn't realize there's no alcohol in it. Stupid fucking idiot. Uh, so that's how I've managed to get through it. Non-alcoholic beer and just sheer determination. Um, I'm not going to fall off the wagon. I'm determined. I'm going to stick to this because as long as I'm feeling good and as long as I'm feeling mentally balanced and not feeling depression or anxiety, I'm just going to keep going like this. I genuinely think a lot of people out there who have depression and anxiety could could really... Let's see, I'm going to tell you this is very delicate. Uh, this is very careful because this could be sanctimonious sounding. I think that a lot of people out there who have depression and anxiety could really benefit from cutting back on alcohol consumption. I genuinely believe that. And I think a good way to try it is to try a month on, month off for a while and just keep going month on, month off. Stock up the fridge with non-alcoholic beers. But the one thing I would say that we found when Hannah and I were doing month on, month off, we almost were playing catch up on the month of drinking. Like we were drinking every day. We were like, oh, it's drinking month. It's Monday, it's fucking 9 a.m. Get the vodka out. It got that bad. So we were almost drinking too much because it was a month on drinking. So it was like, no, okay, let's do this. Let's go, let's go all ham. So that's why I think now we just quit for good because we're like, mm, we don't wanna do that. And so far I feel great. So far I feel really good. I'll let you know how it goes. I'll give you some more updates, maybe in a few more months, let you know how I'm feeling. Yeah. Just got to work on my banter now. I've got to try and be less less uh, boring when I go out. I've got to be a bit more uh, interesting and not so highly strung. I've got to relax a little bit, be a bit more loose. But I've got to do that myself without booze, without stimulants. And I'm sure, I'm sure I can do it. Anyway, if you want to try it too, if you want to give it a go, do the journey with me. I'd love to have you on board, on the wagon with me, arm in arm, chugging along, living a life of sobriety, sucking it all in and not being depressed. I mean, I'll probably still get depressed, but you know, it'll probably help with that. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I hopefully didn't sound sanctimonious. Hopefully it didn't sound preachy or self-righteous or, yeah, hopefully I didn't anyway. I didn't have to slap myself. Yeah, let me know if you wanna try it. Let me know if you are sober, if you, if you, if you live a sober life. Let me know if you would love to try it, but you don't think you can. Just let me, talk to me about your relationship with alcohol. I wanna, I wanna read some of your, your comments. Let me know. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here and uh, and do something else. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.